So I want to talk about adopting Katana in education. Uh, and first I want to talk a little bit about why our school exists and how Katana really dovetails well with our school. Uh, so the, it's called Why CG Masters Adopting Katana or Why the World Needs Better Lighting. So I'm a lighting guy, I'm a career lighting guy. Um, I've worked with software developers since the early 2000s in developing light. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I first started using my very first 3D tool, which was 3D Studio Release 4 for DOS. Anybody here know what DOS is? Uh, I dropped down my first spotlight because I was a scenic and lighting designer for the stage. I put a spotlight down, shone it on the stage, and looked at it and went, well, what is that? Sort of, sort of a spotlight, but it's not right. It's not real. So I was trained in live theater as a scenic and lighting designer, which meant I spent many hundreds of hours atop ladders, hanging up lights, pointing them at the stage. And I know what a light is supposed to look like. But the CG light wasn't right, and it bothered me. So I got in touch with the developer, and I'm like, what is going on here? And I learned, started to learn what software engineers are doing, what they think they're doing, that not all of them know what they're doing, uh, that there are computational reasons, so efficiencies that make lights different. And I discovered that there was a challenge to taking CG lighting tools and making them look photorealistic, which is what we do in visual effects. So I, uh, I worked in theatrical production until the late 90s as a stage production and facilities manager and a lighting and scenic designer. Um, I started learning 3D in the mid-90s, so that was the DOS thing. Uh, in 1997, I actually had the opportunity to start working outside my theater career as a CG generalist doing some corporate videos. So that was my first paid work. Uh, I worked on my first TV movie, Aftershock Earthquake in New York. My producer's in the audience. Lisa, put up your hand, wave. Uh, I got to work on the very last shot of the film because they were behind deadline and really needed, remember? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, in 2001, I became a lighting and match move supervisor at Rainmaker in uh, Vancouver. I, became a, I was promoted to CG supervisor in 2002, not because I was really interested in rising up the ranks, but because I was annoyed with the way things were being done. It was making it hard for me, so I just kind of went, just let me do that. I'll fix that. A uh, good friend of mine who I worked with for many years says, Balogen walks into the room and says, okay, what's broken? So I find out what's broken, and I fix it. And that's, that's who I am. Uh, I became a VFX supervisor in 2004 for the same reason, at which point it became my responsibility to start building production teams. So that means interviewing, hiring, planning, uh, before, even before the project. Uh, and you heard all the things that I worked on. So my big challenge is, was building production teams. It's really frustrating to build production teams. Uh, if uh, when you run out of senior and intermediate level artists, and what you have left is junior artists, and that means you're picking from the dozen or so local schools, you're finding graduates, you're looking at their demo reels, and you're banging your head on your desk wondering what are they teaching. But one of the biggest problems was finding decent lighting people. Uh, so to try to combat this, I went out and started teaching myself at some of the local schools um, to generate, it says here to generate better skills for industry, but it was really for myself. <laughs> uh, in 2010, I started CG Masters Online to provide training videos to debunk many of the myths that are currently and still taught in lighting uh, because I wanted to reach a wider audience because I knew that just teaching part-time at a, one or two schools after work, there was no way I was gonna be able to generate enough people even to fulfill my own team's needs. In 2012, the opportunity arose to expand to a physical campus, which we did. And part of our mandate is to generate great lighting artists and TDs who are well-trained in theory and technology. 
Part of the recipe for our success is a willingness and ability to stay ahead of technology curve rather than being reactive to industry. So one of the things that I've found, and particularly in the schools that I taught at, other than my own, was that, uh, and this, I mean, this, make, this is rational. We ask industry, what do you need us to teach? And they tell us. And then we adjust our curriculum to make sure we continue to deliver that. Well, that's reactive. Um, as somebody who has decades in production, um, I can see technology trends. And it means that I, and I, I have a, a lot of deep connections with most of the developers, and so I can see what's coming. Um, and I also know that not all of the trends that are coming are good. So I have a, I don't know if it's unique, but I have an ability to um, look at technology and see where it's going to go and decide that we're going to train on a trend that's not quite necessarily here yet. And that means that my graduates are, by the time they graduate, are ready for what's currently happening. Enter Katana. So I've been bugging the foundry for years to get me Katana. And they always said, oh, it's not quite ready. We need a whole bunch of TDs to come into your studio and set it up. And I didn't understand what they meant, I do now. Uh, so Katana was originally developed by Sony, it was released to industry in 2011, but not for schools. Uh, it became available to us last year as part of the production collective. Uh, and when I found that up, I phoned Kaylin right away, I'm like, licenses. Katana is now the fastest growing Foundry product, which makes a lot of sense. It's a wicked tool in the hands of somebody who knows how to use it. it provides us massive production efficiencies. And the result is the industry needs more Katana TDs. So you can imagine the Foundry, imagine the fastest growing product of all the Foundry's products. That right there tells us that we need to be training Katana lighting artists and TDs. So this year, we adopted Katana with 3D Light into our production pipeline. OK, so the question is why? Why Katana? What appeals to industry about Katana? Everything is referenced, which means that the Katana scene files are very, very light and fast. Uh, the interface is node-based. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in a second. This permits a totally procedural workflow, and procedures are what keeps studios healthy. So number one, everything is referenced. So some application scene files contain scene elements such as geometry and other things. It makes, it makes scenes very heavy, it makes them slow, it makes them difficult to edit. When everything's referenced, including geometry, it means that switching out assets to a new version is simple. So imagine you, Maya is an example of one of the applications where if you have geometry, it's in your scene. Maya does have a referencing system, but if you go down below one or two hierarchy levels, it's broken. So it's not really usable in a serious production pipeline, which means you have to keep your geometry in your Maya scene. So imagine you have a sequence of 26 shots, all with the same asset in it. And then we find out there's something wrong with the asset and change the asset out. Well, we have to open 26 Miocene files and swap out the asset. Whereas if that asset is referenced to one central location, you change the one asset and all the scenes are instantly updated. To me, that's massive. Uh, so many scene files can be updated instantly with one change. And if all scenes are using the same referenced asset, we know that all scenes contain the latest approved version. And in production, that is essential. If you're not showing the client the version they approved, your company is in legal liability. That's a problem. Node-based interface. So if you're familiar with Nuke or Houdini, you recognize the power of nodes. Nodes make it easy to figure out what you've done. Nodes make it easy to diagnose problems. Nodes make it easy to branch off experiments and versions. Nodes just make it easy. 
Uh, nodes are procedures. Procedures are speed. Speed means on time and on budget delivery. That's how, that, it's as simple as that. If you're not using node -based, a node-based tool, you're not working as fast as you could be. So what's it like? What was our experience adopting Katana? Well, there's good. Highly procedural design permits massive collaboration and efficiencies. Uh, its ability to create macros and instantly add them to the team's tool menu is amazing. So in a node-based interface, typically you hit the tab key, you get a big list of nodes. Anybody can take any group of nodes they've set up, save it as a macro, put it in a particular directory, and at that second, it's available to everybody in their node drop-down list, which is fantastic. Um, it's, a, it's the ultimate in collaborative workflow. Uh, it can con connect uh, to several popular renderers. Take your pick. So there's Arnold, V-Ray, PR Man, 3D Light, and what's the one I'm missing? Redshift. We love 3D Light. So it ships to 3D Light. Uh, which is a beautiful, artist-friendly, modern renderer with great support. Uh, the support team at 3D Light usually responds within an hour from, I don't know, somewhere in Europe or something. Uh, the interface is in many ways familiar. So if you have used another tool with node-based interface, you already understand nodes or functions, how to wire them together. It's very familiar. Uh, the concept of look files is brilliant. So one of the, one of the most important principles of a really, really good production pipeline is something called clean interdepartmental handoff. What this means is when the animators publish their animation to the lighting department, the lighting department can't have any way to accidentally alter that animation. When the modeler publishes their model, whoever's using it next can't have a way to accidentally change that model. It has to remain the published approved version. And in lighting and look dev, there really hasn't been a way to do this. We have to publish an asset with shaders and all, with all the shader controls built into them and everything. And what this does is it leaves us a great big gap for error. What a look file does in Katana is it takes all the shaders, all the data, all anything you want. It can have lights in there, whatever you want in the scene. And it makes it into a single file, one look file that cannot be edited. And you simply pass that file off to somebody, they apply it, perfect, clean interdepartmental handoff. Uh, support is amazing. So, like I said, I've worked with a lot of developers over the years. Um, these guys, I have a lot of contact. Their support must be sick to death of hearing me. I don't think they respond so fast because they like me. Uh, but they're still fast. So I, I, at this time, I really have to give special thanks to Jordan Thistle, Thistlewood and Brian Fukushima and the Foundry support team. Brian's kind of my main go-to guy. I email him something, some question or some complaint. And I usually have an email back almost instantly. Uh, so they're, they're the best, probably the best uh, support I've ever had. It's not all good. I mean, no software is perfect, right? Uh, today, Katana is a lot of work to get up and running in a studio. Uh, it's high, a highly technical tool. It feels like a TD's tool. It feels like it's for developers, not for artists. <coughs> Needs to be set up by TDs. Uh, there are a lot of ways the nodes work that are count counterintuitive. There are some things between 3 Light and Katana that are not yet integrated. It is not super user friendly. It is difficult to learn. It takes a mentally different approach. Not hard, just different to what you're used to. The documentation and learning examples are underwhelming. Uh, a typical example will be 
I'll look at a tutorial or read a tutorial. It, it, the tutorial will show a, a node network, and all of the nodes have been renamed, so you can't know what kind of node they are. And then it'll refer to a, sorry, Foundry guys. It'll refer to a section of the documentation. And you go to the section of the documentation, and there's the word, and it's blank. So this is why it's so great to have support, because I can email them, and I'm like, seriously, guys, you have to fill this in in the documentation. And they're like, oh, OK, we'll do that. And by the way, here's the answer. Um, I, I'm not telling you anything I haven't already discussed with them and anything they don't already know. And, and they've already seen this. And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Make sure when you come here, you say the good, the bad. And you know, they want to know awards and all what, what's going on. And you want to know as well. Um, one of the things we've done for our students if, is we've created a series of free training videos. And they're short. They're like five minutes each. We have a, we've made a website called vfx-school.com. It's got a Katana course, and it's just got this list of little getting started videos for lots of, lots of the little tasks. Uh, it's almost a requirement to know Python. And this is why you need TDs to set up Katana right now. I mean, it's great. Personally, I think everybody working in production should know Python. Python is easy to learn, seriously. So who here knows Python? Who here wishes they knew Python? All right. So you people who wish you knew Python, of you, how many people are intimidated by the idea of learning a computer programming language? Not very many of you. OK, so the idea of learning a computer programming language is, oh my god, computer programming. Python is so ridiculously easy, it's not funny. If I sat down with you for five minutes, I could have you writing your first program. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. You can learn it from a book. There's millions of online training videos. I'm actually going to be doing a series on the VFX School website on Python specifically for my students. I used to have a Python course as part of the school, but I just don't have time. There's too many courses. So I'm going to make it optional, and I'm going to put all my lessons into there. It's really easy to learn, super useful to know as a production artist. Uh, but. Uh, you know, 90% of the people working in production are artists, are not coders. And uh, they don't, a lot of them don't know and don't want to know Python. So having to know, having to script in Python to get Katana to do what you want it to do is a bit of a problem. But we have the awesome. So there are great things coming from Katana. And this little picture over here is a sneak peek. I was allowed to show this. Uh, proceduralism is already there. The, the tool is really powerful. So it's completely valid in production. It's just not super user friendly right now. And in order to grow the user base, of course, we have to make it user friendly. Because most of the people working in production are not TDs. Uh, the dev team is 100% committed to that task. I've spoken with them on many occasions. Um, I actually one day mocked up my own little interface and sent it to them and said, how about this? Brash, arrogant me. And they went, oh yeah, we're doing that, we're doing that, oh yeah, we're already doing that. And by the way, here's four more pictures of what we're doing. And I was like, oh, okay, you guys, you have it, okay. So I am, I'm, I'm uh, really excited. Uh, uh, it says here, I'm a jaded old CG guy, and this is the first time in years I've been excited about a tool. Well, that meeting was what got me excited. So there are great things coming from this tool. And also, I mean, I talk to them, I, well, I harass them about the documentation constantly. So, so uh, you know, they're working on that. Uh, our final word is that if you have the technical wherewithal, now you should adopt this tool. Your students will thank you. Industry will thank you. As trainers, that should be our goal. Thank you 